Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Sudanshu Joshi from Doon University, Dehradun. Today we are going to talk on the module Operations and Life Cycle under the paper Operation Management. After completing this module, you should be able to understand the types of product services and their product life cycle. So we will also understand operational strategies for sustainable products and services. We'll also understand and explore the concept of product life cycle and service life cycles. Now let us introduce uh, to operation management. Operations can be seen as one of the many functions including marketing, finance, personal, etc. within the organization. Operating function is that part of the organization which is devoted to the production and delivery of goods and services. All the organization undertake operations activity because they produce goods or services. Operation management means administration of all the business practices in a way to achieve organization goal more effectively and efficiently. It is a process of management of business operations optimally in order to maximize the business profit and minimize the cost. Operation management refers to the management of production system that transform input into finished goods and services. Therefore, operation management seeks to increase the quality and efficiency of the firm. Various concepts of operations management. Concepts like quality, efficiency and responsiveness to the customers. Let us take quality first. Quality simply means the fulfillment of customers' expectation. For example, Reliable goods and services can fulfill the customer's expectation. Efficiency. Efficiency simply means produce the required amount of output with a given level of input. Responsiveness to customers. It means actions taken to respond to customers' need. Firms can quickly and correctly meet the customer's requirement whenever it arises. Service can be classified into two categories. Core services and value-added services. Core services. Customer wants are products that are made correctly, customized to their need, deliverable on time, and priced completely. These are commonly summarized as classical performance objectives of the operational firm. Carries following properties, quality, flexibility, speed and price, and cost of production. Value chain activities simply make the external customer's life easier or in the case of internal customer, help them to better carry out their particular function. Value-added factory services can be classified into four broad categories. Information, problem solving, sales support, and field support. Before we move ahead, let us understand some basic definition. Definition of information is, it is an ability to furnish critical data on Product performance, process parameters, and the cost to internal groups such as R&D, and to external customers who then use the data to improve their own operations or products. For example, Havlet Packard's Ford Collins quality department provides quality data sheets and videotapes documenting actual product testing and field quality performance to field sales and sell personnel. Problem solving. Let us also discuss the definition of problem solving. It's the ability to help internal and external group solve problems, especially in quality. For example, Tata Steel, a metal rod fabricator, sent factory workers off with the sales people to troubleshoot quality problems. Those factory workers then return to the factory and join with shop floor personnel in remedial efforts. Sales support is the ability to enhance sales and marketing efforts by the documenting technology, equipment, or production systems. Field support is the ability to replace defective parts quickly. We have another definition of strategic sourcing, the development and management of supply relationship to the acquisition of goods and services such a way that aids achieving the immediate needs of a business. 
bulldog effect can be defined as variability in demand as we move from customer to the producer in the supply chain let us also explore definition on functional products it establishes that people buy in a wide range of retail outlets such as grocery stores and gas station normally functional product doesn't involve much innovation we have another definition on innovative products innovative products are products such as fashionable products apparels fashionable clothes and personal computers that typically have life cycle of just a few months we have another definition of outsourcing it means moving some of the firm's internal activities and decision responsible to outside providers logistic management function these are the functions that support the complete cycle of material flow from the purchase and internal control of production material to the planning control of work in progress to the purchasing shipping and distribution of the finished product next definition is of cost of goods sold the annual cost of a company to produce the goods or services provided to customer is the cost of goods sold now let us understand average aggregate inventory value the total value of all items held in inventory for the firm valued at the cost is called average aggregate inventory value next terminology is weeks of supply a measurement on how many weeks worth of inventory is in the system at a particular point of time let us understand the next definition of mass customization mass customization is the ability of a company to deliver highly customized products and services to different customers around the world definition of process postponement delay of the process steps that differentiate a product to as late in the supply chain as possible now let us differentiate between functional products and innovative products functional products includes staples that people buy in a wide range of retail outlets such as grocery store and gas station so in that case that staple is an example of functional product because such product satisfy basic needs they do not change much over the period of time the last so many decades staples in terms of functionality in terms of its appearance and design remains same as it was also in functional product they have a stable predictable demand and long life cycles but their stability invites competition which often leads to low profit margins so we have lot many of companies dealing with the staples like kagaro and other companies that dealing in the manufacturing of such kind of functional products so is a huge competition we are facing let us explore the characteristics of functional products the specific criteria suggested by fisher for identifying functional products includes the following the product life cycle or service life cycle will be more than 2 years second property or characteristic that the functional product possesses they have contribution margin of 5 to 20% third is only 10 to 20 product variations are there fourth an average forecast error at time of production of only 10% 10% is the absolute upper ceiling of the forecast error they have functional product carries next is a lead time for make to order product is from 6 months to 1 year let us understand what innovative products are to avoid low margins many companies introduce innovative services or product into fashion or technology to give customers an additional reasons to buy their products for example fashionable clothes and personal computers support the theme of innovative products there are few examples although innovative or innovation can enable a company to achieve high profit margins the very new newness of the innovative products makes demand for them unpredictable these innovative products typically have life cycle of just few months imitators quickly erode the competitive advantage that the innovative products enjoy and companies are forced to introduce a steady stream of new innovation the shorter life cycle and great variety 
typically of these predicts further increase unpredictability comparison of characteristics of functional and innovative product in terms of demand characteristic functional products carries low demand uncertainty whereas innovative products has high demand uncertainty functional product carries more predictable demand innovative products carries difficult to forecast functional product are stable in terms of demand demand of innovative products vary from time to time functional products has long product life cycle whereas innovative product has shorter life cycle functional product carries low inventory cost innovative product carries high inventory cost functional product has low profit margins innovative product has high profit margins let us explain functional product and innovative products from the perspective of supply characteristics functional product are more stable innovative products are evolving functional product carries less breakdowns innovative products are vulnerable to breakdowns functional products are stable and highly yield carries high yield innovative products carries variability and low yield functional product has less quality problems innovative products has potential quality problems functional product carries more supply sources innovative products carries limited supply sources functional product carries reliable suppliers in case of innovative products suppliers are unreliable functional product has less process charges whereas innovative products has more process changes functional product has less capacity constraints whereas innovative products has potential capacity constraints so let us differentiate between manufacturing and service operation uh, as we can classify organization into two broader categories namely manufacturing and services where manufacturing organization includes produces physical tangible items which can be stored as inventory before delivering to the customers service organization includes uh, they produce intangible items that cannot be produced uh, ahead of time one of the key development in the operations is the increased importance of service operations as service industry accounts for an increasing proposition of the output of industrialized economies difference between service and goods services are intangible and non durable whereas goods are tangible and durable second difference is services can't requires inventory management whereas inventory management is an important part of goods third services required high customer contact whereas goods required low customer contact as compared to the services fourth services are labor centric whereas goods are capital intensive system view of operation management a uh, system is a group of interrelated items in which no item stays in isolation and each item will act in the same way as it would in the system a system can have many subsystem and is a part of a larger system itself the systems boundary define that what is inside the system and what is outside the system outside environment of a system affect the behavior of the system at larger level a system input are the physical objects of information that enter it from the environment and its output are the same which leave it for the environment operation management activities can be classified as input transformation process and output operation management transforms input into outputs that further add it value to the customer it does not matter whether the organization is for profit company or non profit organization or a government agency but all organization must strive to maximize the quality of the transformation processes to meet the needs of the customers following figure summarizes the transformation process operations and life cycle life cycle of the product their input transformation and output are three entities monitoring control has been held through feedback mechanism interlink between input and output environment has its own intervention in terms of customer inputs suppliers input competitors input and regulatory input operations as a key functional areas operation management is one of the important functional areas of any kind of business it influences other functional areas of business 
at high level in other word all functional areas of a business are interlinked and interrelated organizations typically begin their year plan with the marketing function making an estimates of next year sales this input forms the basis of production planning in the operation areas of business procurement planning is done on the basis of the production plan and all these factors lead to a certain estimates of the funds requirement this form an important input for the finance function the human resource management function influences the productivity capacity as the availability of labor depending upon it the actual production of goods and services influence the marketing activities to be undertaken and the quality and timing of available funds from sales such interaction are common in most organization for example the following figure shows interlinkage between various functional areas of a business concern finance with operations finance with marketing finance with human resource management operation with human resource management operation with finance operation with marketing and vice versa services as a part of operation management the service sector plays a very important role in the development of a country it encompasses a wide spectrum of activity in every country in the last 5 years the growth of service sector in india has been very significant although services are often classified separately from manufacturing in a macroeconomic sense from the perspective of operational management from the operational management perspective the notion of a pure product a pure service is just two ends of a spectrum in reality a vast majority of operations shares a quantum of services and products therefore most of the principles and tools and techniques of operation management apply to both these sectors responsibilities of operation management it provides overall management of the ongoing production operations including inventory management equipment maintenance shipping and quality control it is the responsibility of operation management to assist in creation of efficient processes of various business operations through hands on development and training analysis of all records data and checks the quality of different business processes is one of the responsibility of operation management it ensures the security of people involved in the production process it also provide necessary equipments to workers so that they can do their assignment assigned task more effective and efficiently operation management should comply with the acts respecting occupational health and safety as well as the other laws and regulation regarding health and safety priorities for operation management we have list of priorities of for operation management first is acquiring capacities to tolerate product proliferation every organization needs to understand customers needs and incorporate them into new product initiatives in order to satisfy the expectation of the customers organization need to change their process activity second priority should be relate operation system to customers and market before choosing a particular operation management or system an organization need to consider the demand of their available customers in other words choices related to manufacturing and services cannot be made on the basis of internal convenience but instead customers be centered to the demand if customers has difficulty in using the products then it should be rectified operational strategy the process of which key business operations decisions are made is called operational strategy these key business decisions are consistent with the overall strategic objectives of the firm a firm's operating strategy is affected by several factors so before making any operational decision the firms need to consider such factors the factors which need to be considered are as under uh, competitive dynamic uh, dynamics uh, will change due to several factors on accounts of this expectations of the customers are also changed the firms need to analyze 
competitive dynamics before making any operation decision. After competitive dynamics, the second factor could be organization needs. Uh, organization need a uh, approach, uh, strategic approach to scan the market and make operation strategy as per the requirements. Moreover, they also need a mechanism to chalk down a plan for responding to these changes in the most effective manner. The other factor could be with the change in the marketplace, the competitive priorities of the organization must also change. So competitive priorities could be one of the factors. Organization need to tune their operations to match with the competitive priorities. It is also important for the organization to develop the capabilities to devise optimum strategies for operational management and revisiting the strategy formulation exercise wherever there is a requirement of change. Product life cycle. Every product has its own life and it goes through a cycle. Product life cycle is the cycle through which every product goes through from introduction to withdrawal or eventual demise. Different products have different life cycles and it depends upon the characteristic of the product. And the product life cycle, we are trying to find out answers of some questions such as when it was introduced, when it was getting rapid acceptance, when it was on the peak of the position, when it starts falling from the peak and when it disappears. Product passes through certain stages during its lifespan. No product is capable to satisfy needs and wants of the customers for any unlimited period of time. The sales and profits of the products are differing over time. The life of product can be determined by its capacity to meet market expectations. The existence of a product depends upon its capability to satisfy its customer's requirements. Product life cycle help us to know the relationship between sales volume and profits. According to Philip Kotler, the product life cycle is an attempt to recognize distinct stages in sales history of the product. Product life cycle comprises of four stages namely introduction, growth, maturity and declining stage. Each stage of product life cycle has its own characteristics and these characteristics can be characterized in terms of sales volume, amount of profits, level of promotion and expenses and degree of competitiveness. Firms need to be made unique marketing strategy for each stage of product life cycle. Introduction stage introduction stage when a new product development took place and launched to the market and is available first time for the customer in the market customers are not aware about the product or they may not have general opinion and experience about the product in this stage heavy marketing activities and product promotion takes place the product is put into limited outlets in a few channels for distribution sales takes off slowly in this stage the need is to create awareness not profit now let us explore the characteristic of introduction stage in introduction stage a lot of money is required for selling and promoting activities to increase awareness of the customers about the products due to the high development production and marketing cost the price of the product in this initial stage is likely to kept high. Moreover, it depends upon the business strategy of the firm. The technical and production problems has to be tackled by marketing and operation experts. At this very initial stage, the scale of production is very low and it increases at the lower rate. During the introduction stage of the project, Companies suffer from losses and it has negligible profits. In other words, it is situated in the situation of no profit and no loss also. The level of competition is very low under this stage. 
growth stage this is the stage of rapid market acceptance the product get positive response from the market because customers have to be aware about the product this stage is marked by a rapid climb in the sales sales arise at the increasing rate and at this stage seller shifted his promotion attempts from try my brand to buy my brand companies tries to develop effective distribution network so that no problem faced by the customer due to the rise in the profit the number of competitions are high at some buyers are price sensitive to attract such kind of buyers of the product price may be reduced at a right time too characteristic of growth stage as a result of customer acceptance of the product sales increase rapidly under this stage the level of competition is very high because many competitors are present in the market due to attractive profits many competitors have to be evolved and enter into the market due to high sales company earn high level profits to attract more customers companies tends to reduce the product price companies develop the widen distribution network companies enter into new segments and new channels for, to remove the identified defects in the product company made necessary primary changes in the product maturity stage this stage is marked with the slow down of the sales growth the sales of the product continue to rise but at decreasing level and at this stage many competitors have entered into the market and existing products face high level of competition in this stage the sales curve of the firm is pushed downward during this stage for certain period of time sales remain stable this level is called saturation stage profit of the firm decline gradually normally this stage lasts for the longer period of time and marketer face formidable challenges under this stage sales goes at slowly the slower rate finally stabilized in this stage products get differentiated prices bars and sales promotion become common and and few weaker products may exit from the market due to non survival the maturity stage may be divided into three phases namely growth maturity stable maturity decline maturity growth maturity happen during the growth maturity sales growth rate is high stable maturity in the stable maturity phase sales of the firm remain same stable maturity phase is also known as saturation stage decline maturity during the decline maturity phase sales of the firm start to decline characteristic of maturity stage under the maturity stage the sales of the product increased at decreasing rate second characteristic is profits of the firm start to be declined third due to declining profit margins competitors leave the market fourth under this stage firms gives more emphasis to customers retention fifth to sustain in competitive market product market and marketing mix modify are undertaken in this stage declining stage this is the last stage of product life cycle under this stage sales of the product start declining profits are also start erasing there is a minimum profit or even a little loss under this stage firm reduce their advertising and selling expenses in order to earn some profits the declining stage is faced by only those products who survive in the maturity stage in declining stage sales of the product have to be dropped as the customer may have changed the product is no longer relevant or useful during this stage price bars continues several products are withdrawn and cost control becomes the way out for most products as new product enter into the market with the advanced technology and many new specifications most product have to be obsolete customers don't consider such obsolete products 
because on everyone wants to get the update version of the product so sales of the products started decline in this stage new products started their own life cycle and replace old ones a number of competitors withdraw from the market those who retain into the market prefer to drop smaller segment make minor changes in the product and continue sell their products in the profitable segment and channels if there is any possibility for the survival of the products in the market then firms will try to exit in the market with the same product the firm may make some changes in their product for survival characteristic of declining stage during this stage sales of the product decline rapidly profit fall more rapidly than sales in this stage firms made modification in their product for survival gradually companies prefer to shift resources to the new product due to loss or decline in the sales of the product most of the sellers withdraw from the market promotion expenses are reduced to realize a little profit significance of product life cycle product life cycle analysis plays a vital role for the survival of the product of a firm if a product done plc analysis properly then it can know easily about the health of the product in relation to the market it serves plc analysis also helps companies to know about the current market trends after knowing the current market trends firm may make changes in their marketing strategy and also made changes in their products as per the requirement of the customer it will help firm to survive more efficiently and effectively in the target market so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module we learned about the basic definition of operation management from the perspective of production of goods or services we discussed about operation strategy as uh, the set of steps we follow in order to make our product more market oriented and it consists of the operation decision also we discussed about the product life cycle various stages of products we have discussed we discussed about the quality as the central point of discussion where quality fulfills the customer's expectation it should meet the requirement of the customers we also took uh, the whole module from the perspective of system approach and we try to understand how interrelated terms are interlinked and subsystems are you know reporting to the final outcome of the product so for innovative and service based or uh, product based uh, innovation a system approach is highly remarkable highly uh, recognized thank you